So, looks like both Frank Warren and Igus Klimas confirmed that Fury has come to the negotiating table, agreed to make the Usyk fight, that is, which is good news for boxing fans. Looks like Fury is willing to come out of retirement to become the lineal heavyweight champion for the second time in his career. Um, for those of you who still have an issue with Tyson Fury retiring. Uh, this is not the place to bitch and moan about that, right? You're barking up the wrong tree. Go take that up with Tyson Fury. Um, not my problem. Anyway, tax is slavery, I think the name these days is. Tax is slavery boxing. Suggested I check out Alba Boxing's Albion, maybe? White Boxing, um, Alba Boxing, Tyson Fury will beat Usyk, here's why video, so we're going to listen to that and react, I haven't heard what the man has to say yet, um, but give the video a like, sub, comment, check out Patreon, uh, yeah, let's, let's, my Patreon obviously, let's get into this. I was watching Tyson Fury's fight against Dillian White, and then I watched a little bit of, you, you said it'd be Joshua, then I watched a little bit of... Okay, so, I'm not that good with accents, but this sounds like an Irish one, right? The Irish flag is one of the flags that Tyson Fury, the good global citizen that he is, has flown while walking into the ring, adding to the collection of Mexican, right? Uh, United States and the Union Jack, right? Those are the four flags that he's flown walking into the ring um has uh showcased if you will in so far as i remember so yeah i just figured i'd mention that the good global citizen that tyson is fury against deontay wilder in the second fight and then i watched yusik beach zora and then i watched a little bit of fury against cunningham again I'm just trying to match up the sizes and the speeds and how it all works. If, if you watch the Fury v. Wilder fight and then you watch the Joshua v. Usyk fight, one thing that you can see that's a massive difference is the actual pace at the fight, the speed that the guys are moving. The Joshua v. Usyk, they're up on their toes, both of them actually. They're both moving quite quick. Fury v. Wilder was the second one that I watched. They're both kind of slower on their feet and... There's a greater distance between them. They're, they're both, when they're closing the distance, they're both closing the distance quick, trying to get off their big shots, whereas Usyk and Joshua, yeah, they're, in the first couple of rounds, there's a bit of distance between them, but as the rounds goes on, that distance closes and closes. I was thinking to myself, when I was watching these, that, that Usyk's going to be a lot quicker than Fury. And I was thinking, well, can he get in and out quick enough to actually catch Fury? And then I thought to myself, I'll watch the Cunningham, a bit of the Cunningham fight again, because it's the only thing that I can relate to see how Fury reacts to that kind of speed. And at the start of that fight, Fury's fighting at distance. Fury's, Fury's fighting at length. And he's getting some success. But when Cunningham tries to close the distance quick, he manages to do it and he manages to catch Fury and that's when he, he lands on him. And then from that moment on, Fury changes his tactics immediately. Now this is the kind of thing that Joshua doesn't do. Fury changes his tactics immediately and he starts using different tactics. So I think I put a video up of that fight the other day, but I think pictures sometimes speak louder than words. So the first thing that happened in the fight after he got knocked down, this is in the, the fourth round. You can see there in the fourth round. Fury's got him in a headlock, like an actual head. Uh, this isn't obviously aimed at Alba boxing here, but I remember... Um, Hatman, shout out to Hatman. Um, to this day, right, bitching and moaning about what Klitschko did to Povieking in that fight, right? Um, and, you know, for, for all the right reasons, obviously, that was a disgusting performance. Uh, he should have been docked points, and maybe Povieking too, for um, the fouls that he was committing. But it was an ugly, foul filled fight, right? And Hatman to this day does is, you know, reminding us of how terrible that was. And all the Hatman lackeys out there picked up, like Chris Andre picked up the, the slack or um, what's his name, 
that other Irish guy can't with ripped jeans, yeah. And are basically saying the same thing because their mastermind is. But just the other day, Hatman was talking about Fury's performance against Cunningham, and you know, he called that um not beautiful boxing, but what did he call that? Uh, a great adjustment, you know what I mean? So when Klitschko did it, it was disgusting, and when Fury does it, it's great. But that just the reason why I bring it up is to clown Hatman, obviously, and all his lackeys, but also to show you to to explain why the establishment gets away with this, right? Because fans support it. And this is all. This is also a very important narrative going into um, the Usyk fight, right? Uh, Tyson Fury supporters, the ones that actually break things down somewhat honestly, um, don't think he can beat Usyk just being a pure boxer, right? Because Tyson Fury is not a pure boxer, and Usyk is. Headlock, and he's putting all his weight on his back. I don't know if we've seen Joshua do this to Usyk once. Maybe momentarily, but Fury was getting told off from the referee in this fight constantly. He was grabbing him, he was grabbing his arms. That's the first image that I got. The second image that I got is here. And this is Fury. He's virtually doing what my dad used to do to me when I was four years old. He used to put his hand on my head and I would swing my arms trying to hit my dad and he would just stand there with his hand on my head and I couldn't get him. And Fury's just doing this as if to would say... Did you have Usyk's boxing skill at the age of four? Anyway, um, yeah, obviously the reach of Fury is going to be something. It's going to be tremendously difficult for, along with Fury's foot movement, right? Good footwork and good foot movement. It's going to be a tremendous disadvantage that Usyk's going to have to um, deal with, right? But Cunningham is not a southpaw. Look, go on then, try and hit me. I've got my hand right in your face. It's not even like he's, he's not throwing a punch. This is his palm that's in his face. And he's leaning into him. And he's saying, go on then, hit me. Tyson Fu uh, Anthony Joshua never attempted anything like that again against Yusek. He never tried. Anthony Joshua never tried anything. I, I said. That's because. Well, Anthony Joshua, first and foremost, isn't as good as Fury and definitely not at controlling range. So that's one reason why. But another reason why is because uh, Usyk is a little dynamo, right? The head's always moving. The feet are always moving. Um, you know, you, you stick your hand out there like that against Usyk, you're liable to get hit, right? If, if you leave it out there like that. Which isn't to say that Fury shouldn't try. But the reason why, you know, it was easy or easier maybe... Against, I guess we'll, we're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, it's because Cunningham was just not as not as good as Usyk, right? Not a southpaw. Doesn't have the upper body head movement. Doesn't have the type of active guard that Usyk has. Doesn't have the upper body movement of Usyk. Doesn't have the... I mean, you could just go on and on and on and on. I'm sure you get the point, right? So, yeah, it's good points insofar as Fury's concerned, but uh, Usyk's not Cunningham. He said that in the, the, the fight he was going to try and be creative. He never, he never tried, tried to be anything creative. He never tried to do anything out of the box whatsoever. Here's Fury using all kinds of tactics. He's using every one of his advantages over over the littler guy. Now people are saying, "Oh, this was a, this is a different Fury. This was a long time ago. Fury's much better now." This I'm I'm doing this. It's based on the dimensions of the fighters, the dimensions of the fighters, and the speed of the fighters. Cunningham is much faster than Fury. And Usyk's going to be much faster than Fury. But when you use your attributes, it doesn't matter because Fury's using his other attributes to his advantage and he, and he milks every little bit of advantage out of them that he can. So that's the second picture that caught my attention. This was in, as you see, the round four as well. So I, Sometimes I get a whiff of a Scottish accent. Anyway, it's a weird one. So many different accents. Uh and the British Isles. Round four, he's already st he got knocked down in round two, and by round four, he's getting the guy in headlocks. He's he's put he's using his leech, reach to its full advantage. Number three. So cheating, right? So all that will depend on the referee, whether or not the referee enforces the rules of boxing, right? The first time Fury does something like that, 
hard warning the second time or warning second time he does it hard warning the third time he does it point gets taken away right so if we get a fair referee uh fury is going to lose if he uses these tactics right but i guess the assumption is that fury the referee is going to protect fury that's what we have to uh, let's expose the hidden premises to these arguments that's all i'm saying here's the next one now if you look at his arm there he's got cunningham's arm all locked up and he's got his head driving right into uh, cunningham's head shortly after this he actually gets a point deducted for button heads Anthony joshua over the two fights never got one point deducted never got one point deducted for doing anything dirty yes the second fight he hit a low blow and he got told off for that but he never got a point deducted Robert, I think he, I think he done a couple of hammer fists. I think he tried to do a couple of hammer fists. Uh, does Fury, who had a massive cut open up against the southpaw a few fights ago, does he really want to be using his head against a shorter guy, who is not a dirty fighter, but as my film studies on Patreon show, he can be slick if you force him. If you push him there, right? Now, I don't think Fusik, Usyk can has it in him to fight dirty like Fury, right? But, you know, does Fury want to use his head given his history of... of given that cut in the Walleen fight, does he want to use his head against the Southpaw? I mean, maybe, but maybe not. On the back of Usyk's head. But it was all very pity patty. It wasn't... Like, you should, he should have gotten a point deducted. He should have taken it right to the line. Get a point deducted. Yeah, in a fight like that, a point could be important. But the way it turned out, it wasn't important. So, Anthony Joshua should have been pushed it to the limit. Here's Fury in round four or five, after he's been knocked on his ass, getting points deducted. So, he's taking risks. He's putting it all on the line. He's thinking, I've just been a 10-8 round, and now he's away to get a point deducted for button heads and... Twisting the guy's arm up, just roughhousing him. There he is again. Grabbing right, him. but that's the thing, right? He's going to be taking risks. That he, he may get points deducted, right? So, you know, that could go either way. Especially in what I see as a close fight, right? That could really hurt him. On his head, pushing it down, using all these advantages, using all the big man tactics. I mean, imagine having a guy like Fury with that, like, doing that to you. It just wears you down. It just it drags you out. Well, that's the point, right? Usyk is supposed to imagine this and prepare for it, right? Cunningham wasn't prepared. He didn't know how to deal with it, I guess. Cunningham, you know, was a cruiserweight his entire career. Um, never really had to cope with this sort of stuff. Usyk uh, has coped with it a little bit, but <laughs> nowhere near to the level that Fury can do it, although Usyk apparently, these are just rumors, right, apparently um, almost ran Vladimir Klitschko out of his own gym, so does he know how to deal with this, this sort of stuff? Mm, I would say from what I've seen, right, not going off rumors, from what I've seen, he knows how to deal with this sort of stuff better than Cunningham, which doesn't mean that you know, these sort of tactics won't be successful for Fury. Um, which doesn't mean he will or won't get points taken away for, for doing this sort of stuff, right? Does or does it? Who knows? I mean, Andy Joshua, when you look at the size difference, I mean, the size difference between Joshua and Fury is the same as the size difference between Yusek and Joshua, if you get what I'm saying. So... No, I don't. I couldn't disagree more. So this is Tyson Fury standing next to Magic Johnson, who is listed as 6'9". And Fury looks to be a couple inches shorter, right? Than Magic Johnson. So, um, how tall is Fury really? Well, when he was facing off with Deontay Wilder, who's I think listed at 6'7", he looked maybe half an inch taller than Wilder. Maybe not at all. So how tall is Fury really? Mm, six, seven and a half on a good day maybe? I don't know. Something like that. Is he really taller than AJ? Eh, 
maybe like half an inch. Maybe. Does he weigh more than AJ? Yeah, but it's mostly fat. Is he bigger than AJ? Uh, slightly, but there's... I think he's overrating the the size difference. When you go to Yusek to Fury, that size difference is massive. Fury's got an 85-inch reach, and Yusek's got a 78-inch reach. So he's seven inches difference in the reach. There's six inches different in the height. I think when Fury went in and what he was... I think it's fair to assume that if the height is overrated, so is the reach probably, right? But Fury will have a height and reach advantage, yes. I just don't think it's as big as people are saying. But last previous fights, he was like 275, and Yusek's 220-odd. So there's like a 50-pound difference in weight. The height difference is massive, and the reason I'm put... Yeah, but Fury's going to be carrying a 30 pound fat backpack right into the ring now that fat will be evenly distributed between his nipples and uh <laughs> his uh testicles but you know uh come on now like come on now the fury's for a man that size to be to have like a three inch layer of fat around his be belly, right, thereabouts, that's probably 30 pounds of fat that don't need to be there, 25 pounds of fat that don't need to be there, you know what I mean? They're, they're giving him no advantage whatsoever. Maybe they help to pad body shots a little bit. Dubious. Putting this Cunningham pictures on isn't because of how he fights or how he fights now compared to how he fights then. It's the weight difference, it's the size difference, and it's the it's the tactics that Fury will use to win a fight. He will do anything to win a fight, and he will use every one of these attributes that he's got. Yeah, here's the next picture I've just showing you. Why are we assuming... This is the hidden premise, right? It's assumed that Fury will have the referee on this side, right? Protecting him. Again, where he goes in with a head. Here's the point being deducted. And this is the one just before he knocks him out in the seventh round. He's got his arm writhes right in his face he starts here with a glove in his face and then he runs his arm right down right down the inside of his head and then brings his right up as he's pushing his head down to meet the right we should have all seen the knockout before so cunningham has been on the canvas i forget how many times in his career right he was always a chinny guy uh he's lost a lot of fights um he's been knocked out many times maybe not many times a few times before right um at least i think he has i don't remember exactly but you know he's he's always been chinny and vulnerable and not that difficult to hit so i mean you know is is it any wonder that he just stands up straight on the ropes and doesn't really know how to cope with um fury's dirty tactics right cunningham is the one who was always a dirty fighter, right? He was always the one cheating. Um, maybe he should have learned how to how to deal with cheaters, right? And Cunningham being in the cruiserweight division, he fought, you know, a lot of mostly European or like Canadian guys, right? Very, very pure boxers, essentially. Except Marco Hook. <laughs> it is what it is. Four. But there he is there, ramming his arm right in his head. A lot of people said at the time this was a foul, and it probably is, but he doesn't care. He's probably. He's willing to do anything to win. If you look at the, the Dillian White fight, he uppercuts him, then pushes up here, he's pushing him, then uppercut him. Do you know what I mean? He will do anything it takes. He'll fight dirty, he'll fight big, he'll fight strong, he'll get you in headlocks, he'll push you down. He will do anything that he can't win. He's a fantastic competitor. Anthony Joshua. Right. Being a dirty fighter, breaking the rules of boxing is being a fantastic competitor. I mean, I figure that one out, you know what I mean? Hustus seems to want to win, technically. Or in other words, refusing to compete in the sport of boxing, right? Is a fantastic, well, yeah, fantastic competitor in what? In dirty fighting. I guess, in cheating. He's a fantastic cheater. Right? Just keep it real, man. 
He seems to want to win with a clean, sweet knockout. Why can't he? Why can't he do these kind of things? I mean, people are saying, "Oh, that's not his game. He's not his game." I mean, why can't he learn that? It's nothing technical. Surely we can all learn to ram our, our elbows into someone's face or lean on someone or put them in a headlock. There's nothing technical in this. Fury's willing to mix it all up. He's willing to fight any way he has to to win. He can go in there and fight. Oh, no, no, no. This is technique. It is. It's just illegal. Orthodox. He can switch up to southpaw. He can lean. He can. He can use his reach. He can fight technically. He can fight rough. He can do anything he wants, and he can do a mixture of all these in the fight. People say that you. Fury can do anything, really. I mean, okay. How good is he at everything? Usyk confuses their opponents. Fury has the ability to confuse Usyk. He has the ability to fight in any manner that he wants to, to be able to beat him. I, the reason I started looking into this today was because I was starting to come around to the way of thinking. I mean, we don't know that. <laughs> he may, he may be able to, uh, but you know, that it's not a given that Fury has the ability to confuse Usyk. That's just there's no evidence for any of this. But it could happen, right? The Usyk is probably going to win this fight. I actually think now, after going back and thinking through it all again that this might be a fairly easy win for Tyson Fury just because of the methods that he will use to put everything into his advantage he will fight at distance as he was doing I watched the Cunningham fight and he was fighting at distance and then closing the gap quick and once he closed the gap it didn't matter if he took if he had to eat two or three to close the gap which he usually did against Cunningham and he definitely will against Usyk once he closes the gap he keeps it closed and what and what Anthony Joshua did in the ninth by trying to keep that gap closed and keep him pinned up against the ropes, but only had enough energy to do it for one fucking round, Fury will do that from round one, and he'll have enough stamina to do it until round 12. This is going to be a battle of the stamina, but the thing about it is, Usyk is going to have to use twice as much energy as Fury uses, because Usyk's going to be the one fighting him off. Usyk's going to be the one having to try and push him off, and it ain't going to be easy. The referee for this match is going to be extremely important. Usyk's going to burn up twice as much energy than Tyson Fury will. Even though Usyk's carrying around 225, 230 maybe pounds on fight night and Fury is carrying around 270-ish. Usyk's going to be burning up more energy. Twice as much energy? I mean, yeah, it's going to be... If Fury wants to make it so, it's going to be a physically demanding fight for Usyk. No doubt about it. But it's going to be a stamina-draining effort from Fury too, right? I think stamina is going to be very important for both guys. Uh, Fury beating Usyk fairly... Easily, I mean, I don't know what that means exactly, so I'm not going to be too much of a stickler there. But it sounds uh, sounds more hopeful than as a uh, you know all around um, fair analysis, in my opinion. If you have a referee that won't let close fighting, that won't let inside fighting, you might find Fury getting po loads of points deducted and. It is inside fighting a euphemism for cheating now? Because there is a difference between inside fighting and the things that Fury does. Now, Fury can fight on the inside, right? If But you have to stand there and be there for that. If you're not there for that, then, you know, he has to cheat to get you to get you there, right? He has to grab you. If, if you're good enough and elusive enough like Usyk to get out of there, right? Um... So, I mean, yeah, it's probably not advisable for Usyk to fight Fury on the inside. He doesn't want to be on the inside, right? Um, but, I mean, talking about Fury just coming forward and, and eating shots from Usyk, like two or three, like he did from Cunningham, well, Usyk is better than Cunningham. And I would say he hits harder than Cunningham when he wants to, right? Um so, you know, to to just dismiss, to just 
you know, if Cunningham is hitting, hitting him with two or three, right? Well, Usyk should be able to, right? Or maybe instead of two or three, one really big one to just off the bat assume that that it's, yeah, no problem. It's not going to be a problem for Fury, right? It's not like he's ever been knocked down in his career, right? He's just, just going to, you know, walk through Usyk's punches because, you know, it's not like he's ever been knocked down by a cruiserweight, right? Or hurt by bums, right? That's never happened, right? I mean, that sounds more like wishful thinking than anything, right? And it being a really scrappy fight with referee having to try to split them up all the time. Fury won't care if the referee has, has to split them up. He won't change his game plan. He'll go in there and he'll still lean on him and push him because... Okay, so if the referee disqualifies him, then Usyk wins, right? If we get a fair referee, then he will get disqualified and lose, right? So Fury needs the referee to protect them, right? Referees will get fed up trying to break them up all the time, and the fight will be scrappy, but in the long run, it will still be Fury that will be winning on, on, on the scorecards if it's that kind of fight, because what's Usyk going to do is he going to... So again, the hidden premise is that referees just going to allow Fury to foul, right? He's not going to take points away. Try and run the whole night. He can't run the whole night. He's in there, and Fury will be willing to take a few punches. Fury's not afraid. Not going to be even remotely afraid against Usyk's power. I watched the Derek Chisora fight against Usyk, and Derek Chisora, in the first half of the fight, was just eating those shots. He had no respect whatsoever for Usyk. Derek Chisora seems to have a better chin than Anthony Joshua because Joshua was shit scared at Usyk's power. Joshua's chin seems to have like just totally deserted him. He seems to have no confidence in his own chin. Like, against Usyk, Fury will just walk in there. You won't, don't, don't get me wrong, he won't just walk straight in. He'll try and close the distance quick like he did in the second Wilder fight. He was fighting at distance, and then when he and then when he wanted to close the distance, he closed it quick. Yeah, but Wilder, it, it, was, it was dangerous to try and close that distance. It's not going to be anywhere near as dangerous trying to close the distance with Usyk, because he's going to be able to take his power. So there's a chance of a flash knockdown, but I don't think Usyk's going to hit Tyson Fury with any single punch that's going to keep him down. I don't think that's likely to happen. I mean, if it didn't happen with Wilder in three fights, unless... Yeah, that's probably not likely to happen. Um, but I think he has the power to hurt him. I think he has the power to win rounds. And I think he has the power to make Fury change up a little bit. But I mean... Yeah. I mean, it's that's that's a good point. It's like, well... How will Usyk's power look against Tyson Fury? Now, when it comes to someone like Chisora closing the distance on Usyk, uh, you know, the things that Chisora was doing in there, I'm not going to say that Fury can't do those things, but I've never seen him do the things that Chisora was doing in, in the way that Chisora was doing them. So, I mean... And I've never seen Tyson Fury close the distance as quickly as Chisora did in that fight against Usyk. And that was a small ring. Now, we'll see what kind of ring we get, but that's something to, to think about, right? And Usyk had Chisora out on his feet in, what was it, like the seventh or eighth round or something like that, right? Didn't follow up, but um, once Chisora slowed down a little bit, and Usyk stopped running as much and planted his feet. Um, he hurt Chisora multiple times. And had him out on the feet where Chisora was saved by the belt. So, I mean, you know. Uh, you, you know, I don't know. I don't know how, uh, how well Fury will be able to take Usyk's power. But that's just the thing, right? None of us know. None of us know. But he does. This guy does somehow. Unless Fury's chin disappears overnight, then it ain't gonna happen with Usyk. So Fury will be willing to keep it at distance. Fury's chin. How many times has he been knocked down? Right. I mean, he got knocked down by a shot high on the forehead by Deontay Wilder. Right. In one of the later rounds of that fight. Where Deontay Wilder's power probably wasn't what it was early, right? The guy's been down from, you know, Cunningham. Whatever. We we know the deal, right? So this this idea of like 
Fury's chin, I mean, well, how good is it? He's been down many times. Now, he's got heart because he gets up and he wins. But, I mean, all of a sudden he has a great chin or something? I mean, okay. I, I don't know where this comes from, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> he's been down so many times in his career. And yet we're talking about his chin like it's... It's not bad. Don't, I don't think his chin is bad. Don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? But it's not like anything to brag about either. See how that goes for a while. Close the distance quick and then keep on him and keep him on the ropes. And he'll do that for the first round. And I can't see how Yusek is going to be able to overcome that. And it's just through nothing else than sheer size. Size and style of fighting. Fury is willing to fight that way and capable of fighting that way. Joshua was not willing to fight that way at all. Well, he was, right? But the referee put a stop to it, right? Of course he was. He tried it. He, he was grabbing Usyk behind the head, looking to hit him with the uppercut. Didn't work for him because Usyk was ready, right? He was low-blowing Usyk. Um, he was... Doing some other things I can't remember right now, right? But as soon as he tried, right, the referee put a stop to it. So he stopped doing it, right? If he keeps doing it and the referee's doing his job, Fury that is, then he gets points taken away. If he keeps doing it, he gets disqualified if the referee is doing his job, right? Now, what if Usyk just, you know, and I know he's got no punching power and Tyson Fury's got balls of steel, but what if Usyk just sits down after Fury just keeps fouling him and he's allowed to, right? Sits down on a long left hand to the balls and jumps in with an upper, with a with a headbutt, right? At the same time. I mean, doesn't seem like something Usyk would do, you know what I mean? But I mean, if he's desperate enough and the referee's not doing his job, then... I don't know. I don't know. Something to think about. Anyway, um, yeah. Again, the 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 hidden premise is that you know Fury's going to be allowed to cheat. So I don't see how Usyk can beat him, right? That's the and this is why boxing. You know, one of the reasons, obviously, why this keeps happening in in boxing is because fans are demand this, right? There's always going to be a certain contingent of fans who will demand that their favorite fighter is, or one of them, right, the favored in, in any given matchup is allowed to cheat, right? This is what this video is, right? Even, we all go on about it, Chisora showed the blueprint, blah, blah, blah. He didn't, well, Chisora didn't win. There is some truth to Chisora showing the blueprint. It's just that Chisora isn't, Chisora doesn't have that big of a size difference from music to be able to do it effectively enough. Fury does. I mean... So, Usyk has never lost. And it shouldn't even be... I know people will bitch and moan and complain about certain fights. But it shouldn't even be controver a controversial statement, right? He's never lost. Tyson Fury has a draw against Wilder. Say what you will about that. He has a draw, right? He should have lost against Waleen. Right, a southpaw. You should have lost that fight. Um, should have been stopped on. I mean, come on. We've seen fights stopped on lesser cuts than that. So should have been stopped in that fight. And you know, fear. Yeah, Usyk looked a little vulnerable in the Chisora fight. No doubt about it. Early, and then he adjusted. Chisora gassed out, and you know, Usyk never looked back. But, I mean, if that's the blueprint, right, what Chisora did, okay. Yeah, if you could keep on doing that while not getting hit with anything cleanly, anything clean. If that's a blueprint, right, a guy winning maybe three rounds by cheating, if that's a blueprint to beat Usyk, um, what about all those times where, you know, Fury looked poor in certain fights, arguably lost certain fights, has been knocked down in many fights by cruiserweights. Those those are not blueprints, right? 
those are not blueprints. Okay. This is, you know, he makes a lot of good points, right? But I think he exaggerates everything when it comes to Fury, and it's just all one-sided analysis, right? He's massive. He's absolutely massive. He's six foot nine. He weighs 25 pounds more than Anthony and Joshua. You know, he's three inches taller than him. The guy is massive. So I've swung back the other way now, and I firmly believe that... So Frank Bruno is 6'3", right? Now he is a little bit closer to the camera, it would seem, than Tyson Fury, maybe. Yeah, maybe a little bit. But at the same time, how old is Frank Bruno? 60? 50? I don't know, right? As you get older, you shrink a little bit. So let's just say he's 6'3", and they're the same distance away from the camera. Is this a six inch height advantage, right? So, I mean, once again, um, yeah, Fury's bigger, but massive? Come on now. Tyson Fury will win that fight, and I think he'll win it quite handily. Anyway, I just wanted to get that off my chest. He was described. So. He went from picking Musik, I don't know how confidently, to saying that Tyson Fury wins the fight handily. I mean, maybe he does. I don't know. But was that an unbiased, fair, not to say he didn't make good points, right? But extremely accurate analysis? Fuck no! Thanks for watching.